feel us in on that case and very difficult. Commissioners, thank you for your time and listening on that. But let's go ahead and loop very quickly if you can, and you can see you can combine six and seven together. So Madison will take uh, take us through the case of the VA 2017-12, 2017-13, about nine. Yes, so this is a, another pair of requests, um, same applicant, in this case the same properties. It's a total of 1.12 acres, currently zoned RM conditional. You may remember that request from three years ago that involved eight parcels of land. One of those has since been rezoned and split out. That is the RP property, which you see at the northwest corner of Azalea and Bay Tree, and at least seven parcels remaining. The applicant in this case is going to purchase these two properties and separate them out from the larger whole, but to rezone it from RM conditional to just regular RM. And then the next item is a plan development request um, for that property uh, with a little higher density in terms of strict unit count, but pretty low bedroom count. Um, the property is in the neighborhood activity center, uh, which is a corridor along Bay Tree Road is also in the Bay Tree University Corridor Overlay District, which is a zoning requirement. It has some architectural standards and some things that apply to any type of development along there. The character area map, you see this is sort of the mixture of the institutional um, uses and character area associated with BSU. And then to the northwest, you have established residential, which is associated with the Alden Park neighborhood. Um, you may remember three years ago, there was a lot of discussion about this property that was sort of in between and how to develop it. Um, the request is, you know, a little bit, of course, a lot of the previous uh, approvals of the RM conditional sort of a foregone conclusion. Um, those conditions sort of trip up the possibility of separating this out. The conditions from three years ago are in your packet, and then it's conditions number one and three that trigger this rezoning request. That first condition was multi, uh, for multifamily development, combine all parcels of land into one lot. And that means all parcels within that zoning polygon, which in this case would be seven properties. So in order to develop two of them independent of the rest, we would have to remove that condition from the zone in order to do that. The third condition is buffy or landscaping, and this is where some of that language got spilled over into the other one. Um, but that was a special item for our buffy yards between the apartments that were proposed at that time and the single family neighborhood, particularly the R10 properties along Pine Tree Road, uh, which are not as applicable for this property since it faces Bay Tree. Um, so in this case, it is a request to remove the conditions of RM zoning and then for plan of development. The other item has a site plan which is in more detail. But the development plan, let's see if I can skip ahead to that. There we go. This is different than the site plan that was distributed and discussed at the work session. Back then, the proposal was for what mostly one bedroom, but also a few two bedroom unit uh, buildings, and for a total of 32 bedrooms. The applicant has now amended their request to reflect still the 24 dwelling units, but they would all be one bedroom units. So, in terms of bedrooms, count it's 24 bedrooms instead of 32. What that has done is freed up a lot of more space, um, extra space on the site plan. The buildings are a little bit smaller. There's less parking required. Um, that actually makes for, I think, a more attractive site plan. Uh, one of the issues during the review process, like we talked about in the work session, was traffic flow through the parking lot. It was two dead ends. Um, now it is a loop uh, parking lot. The dumpster has been relocated to the back, which is a whole lot better. Um, and engineering and fire department have not failed this thing. They like this plan a whole lot better. So we have the blessings <coughs> of that. But as you see, there's a lot more green space and open space than before. Um, there's approximately 40% impervious surface throughout. Um, by zoning, they're allowed to have up to 65%. So this is less dense, less impervious than what they could do otherwise. So in exchange for a few deviations from the standard development code, which in this case is really two. 1.12 acres at 18 units per acre yields a maximum of 20 dwelling units. Plan development allows the possibility of them to ask for more, 20% more, which in this case you go from 20 to 24. So that is their request, 24 units. That's the most they can ask for. 
The other deviation is that of setback from Baytree Road. The overlay district in this portion requires a 50-foot setback, which is not a fluke, it's just because of the pattern on Baytree. The way the code is worded, you take the average setback distances of properties on the same side of the road for 200 feet in either direction, you average it, you get the number. We had calculated that painstakingly three years ago when we had that controversial zoning case. We came up with the number of 50, and we stuck to it. So that's where the 50 comes from. And that is because properties, particularly to the west, or on these lots where the buildings were set way back. That is not typical of RM development. RM zoning anywhere else in the city would allow you to be as close as 15 feet to the front property line. The applicant in this case is requesting 25 feet. So greater than what RM would allow, greater distance, but not as far back as the overlay district would require. So that's their other deviation or their other point of relief. So in exchange for having four more one bit or more, four more dwelling units, a lesser setback to Bay Tree, they would voluntarily restrict themselves to one bedroom units only for a total of 24 beds. Conceivably, apartments could be two, three, four bedrooms each, times 20. You could have high, as numbers as high as eight. And there's a lot of difference between that and 24. Um, so with that in mind, as a plan development staff is supportive of the plan development request and the resigning request that goes along with it. Talked about a lot of here, we talked about a lot of the work sessions, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Now the conditions that are with it, there's the footnote. And I'm pretty sure those seven there are the seven that we're going to consider. But that goes with the plan development. Some of these are carryover from a few years ago, but it was really to lock it into the plan development that I just described. Commissioners, any questions from staff at this point? Commissioner Hall? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Matt. Uh, it looks like they're only encroaching the 50 foot setback with one bill. Correct. Yeah, with their ability to shrink the buildings a little bit and have a little less parking and gave them that flexibility, um, they really didn't want everything to be perfectly symmetrical. And so the idea was to have, you know, in this case, you see half of a building encroaching, but they're still exceeding the RM standard of 15, so they're going to be at 25. And that's typical of a lot of other zones would be 25 or 30 foot setback anyway. Um, I noticed on their site plan, they seem to have an eight-foot solid wood fence, at least on the back line. And your condition five calls for six foot, except on the front of four foot. Right. Uh, you can address this or the applicant can address whether they would agree to eight all the way around, except on the back of your head. Just okay. some additional comfort. Eight feet, then you could have that discussion with them. Um, because of the increased building distances here, I think six is fine. Keep in mind the zoning map. You've got RM zoning on most of the borders. So it's light zoning against light zoning. So there's really no buffer required. It's only on these western borders. And they're proposing a greater setback distance there than would be required otherwise. So I'm not as, as concerned about the fence site here as I was on the previous request. Um, the fencing is really a difference in the fence requirements or regulations for fences on a road frontage versus the side of their property line. When you have a solid opaque fence, you can't see through it. So the idea is not to restrict visibility across the front. And so that's why we did a little bit of the map and required the front portions of the side lines to be the decorative fence, the same as what's on the day tree frontage. And then the solid fence will go around after that. So it looks a little less walled in because there's no buildings up close. So you would move the fence line back to where the buildings are. And my other question is one I don't know that there's an answer for because I can't figure anything out. But I'm trying to anticipate okay. And I wonder if the city has given them a call to starting now as these complexes begin to develop near the university on the Fort Lane Road to trying to head off the problem students crossing everywhere along Patterson. Mm -hmm. Is there any requirement to be put on the property such as signage or I mean it may not mean anything, but you know, direct
directing them to either the crosswalk of the corner and stuff, and they treat it with the crosswalk of the corner. Because they, uh, you know, I mean, because you got, you got a apartment complex <coughs> right across from the PD Center. They go in there, and it's a natural thing for 18 year old kids to get right out of the crop, right out of the sidewalk, right across the corner. Right right. I mean, you could add a condition that is signed to put at the ends of these two sidewalks that would connect to the Bay Tree Road sidewalks reminding people of the nearby crosswalks. I think that's about as far as you can go with it. Keeping in mind that you know, pedestrians is two-way traffic, and we can't require this developer to have signs on a university property, particularly when they have no jurisdiction there. Right. And, sure students, sure. and students, you know, some of them read signs better than others. It's Hi guys, any other questions for staff on this request? There being none, anyone here wishes to speak in favor of the two uh, two requests that we just spoke about, please come forward this time. And I don't know why you would want to put a 
you know, basically a KA house there, which they had there, and all these parties, and you hire a deputy, and you got this big black fence up that they got to put around it, and do not take <coughs> it at all. And God knows how many living, and I guarantee you, living, there were more living in that house than I'm putting 24 of them. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, you didn't have no signs posted. Sorry? You didn't have no signs posted. Like a limited area. <laughs> it's it's I, I know it did work a couple of parties and, and stuff like that. But anyway, the bottom line is that we want to improve it. And and I think we came up with uh, a me doing one bedrooms and one bath, 24, uh, make a nice green area. It's going to be a beautiful apartment complex taking these buildings that need to, that need to go. I mean, you, you don't have enough money to go in there and fix it and what these people paid already for the land. You, nobody's going to live there. And there, some of them are uh, coming out of pocket just to get out, get, get out of the because they can't do nothing with them. I mean, they're not going to put nothing with them. And nobody's going to live there. So you're going to have 24 kids in one little house and killing it, or you're going to have, you know, a nice one bedroom, one bath. Uh, it's already zoned for 20. I could come up here and put two bedrooms, two baths. It's already zoned. But I'm up here trying to make this place look good and keep the population down and I look at the neighborhood in the back which I own two houses and they're rent and I keep mine up and the yards are cut and I got good people and they shouldn't and, and this is going to take that away this will take somebody trying to go in there and do another five deal and taking in uh, Pine View um, it'll stop it the neighborhood don't have to worry about it. Any questions for our presenter? Thank you, sir. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Are, are you going to manage the department? Yes, sir. I okay. uh, sure will. And these are single story, right? Yeah. No, two story. Two story. Okay, yeah. I was just making sure it didn't say anything. No, it's, it's two story. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I'm, I've, uh, I'll probably have one there. I'm, I'm on, on, on hand. And that's how we do our properties. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else here wishes to speak in favor? There being none, anyone here wishes to speak against this request? Anyone here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward. And there being none, commissioners, any discussion on agenda six and seven this evening? Probably should have separate motions of votes for each one. So yes, sir. Okay. All right, so if that be the case, let's look at agenda item number six and the rezoning request. And this time I will take a motion on that. We have a motion to. Good. We have a, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on it? Any discussion? There being none, please signify by reading the right hand. That passes by zero that Ms. Carmella. And while we're right there on six, we'll jump very quickly to seven, which is the 